point. What does it actually mean? So, from a standpoint perspective, it is essentially what could be. Whether that's an individual, a group, or just the evolution of something into something else. It's often positive, um, but it's not always. Generally, it is the case that you'll either talk about potential or failed potential or something along these lines. I mean, if you just want a purely scientific perspective, you know, if you've got potential energy, is energy that will then transform, transform into another type of energy. And I guess that's a decent base point to kind of springboard off. So when people say, ah, you've got potential, what they're actually saying is you could go on to do this. Say, for example, with this video, let's get meta with it. This video could go on to have three views. It could go on to have 10 million views. It could go on to be the most viewed video on YouTube. Who knows? That's the potential to do that. Now, what is the realistic potential of this video? Then you can start breaking it down like that, saying, well, this is the subscriber count. This is how consistent you've been in the past. This is the algorithmic likelihood that this video is going to do well. And resultantly, what you're going to end up having is a load of factors that will then assess the potential that this is going to have. And that goes for basically anything. A very common way the potential is displayed is in sport. Say, for example, with a young sports player, let's take Kylian Mbappe. In 2018, people said he had the potential to be better than Pele. He'd won a World Cup at age 18. He was the star of the French national team at age 18. And people were saying he has the potential to be the best ever in this sport. Now, we're getting to the age now where he's 24. And people will say, has he reached his potential? Is he where we'd think he'd be at this age? And truthfully, yes and no. And that's how you gather perspective on what potential actually is. And the thing is as well, is it's not really objective. When assessing potential, obviously there are people that are going to be more likely to know what this potential is. That's why scouts in many fields exist, whether it be acting, whether it be sports, or whether it be music. Any kind of artistic or even non-artistic kind of fields will have people that will see talent in other people and be very reliable at seeing potential. Does that mean that everyone they're going to pick up is going to become fantastic at what they do? No. But does it mean that they're more qualified? Yes. And I think that's the thing as well. You have to be careful who is saying what about things because it's very obvious from a certain perspective maybe why this person is potentially going to go on to be the best ever in their field, whether it be acting. And let's take acting as an example. There are a lot of actors that come through into the acting world through nepotism, say for example. And so someone that isn't actually maybe that good of an actor will be given a leg up purely because of nepotism, because they have family in the business, it runs in the family, they've got the connections. And that's a big, big part of reaching potential. It's having the right people around you. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And as annoying and frustrating as that is, it's very true. The individual cannot actually really do too much when it comes down to it by themselves. You need someone to finance you. You need someone to support you. You need someone that if you aren't on, on it that day, that will motivate you to get back on if you're not that person yourself. Now, a lot is obviously down to yourself, but there is a very, very, very large percentage of it that is out of your hands and always will be. There are people that are infinitely talented that will never get spotted. And there are some people that are infinitely talented that get spotted later on in their careers. Take, for example, again, if we're going to use the analogy of football, Jamie Vardy. Start playing premiership football at age 27. I mean, he basically given up. And yes, there are other factors that will stun potential. And I'm going to talk about that now. Say, for example, you are wanting to become a world-class chef, but there's no opportunities for you to apply your trade nearby. You're either going to have to take the jump and go somewhere where there is opportunity, or you're going to have to give up on that dream and try something else. 
But then, let's say you do take the prior option, and do move elsewhere, and it fails, you've now wasted your time. And that is a reason why a lot of people do not step out of their comfort zone and actually reach their potential, because they are scared of failure. And that, quite frankly, is normal. That's human. Because taking risks, there's always that famous saying, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You can go chasing things, but at the end of the day, two birds in a bush aren't guaranteed. The one in the hand is, and a lot of people would rather have that bird in the hand. And again, it just comes down to perspective and where you're from. Reaching your potential ultimately does seem like one of those things that people used to manipulate other people as well, saying, you've got the potential to do this. They'll try and push you. And if they genuinely do see you doing stuff, they'll hang on, they'll cling on. And they'll try and get maybe shares, or they'll try and, you know, somehow weasel away into a contract and they can't get money off you. And this goes for people that aren't even that talented, necessarily. Everyone has hangers on. You do, I do, everyone does. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Absolutely not. At the end of the day, a lot of people that are there with you are your friends, are your family. Do you necessarily always want to spend time with them? Not necessarily. You know, but at the end of the day, people around you what make life worth living. And so I think this whole obsession with potential of what the future could be is almost... It's almost unimportant. I think the, the current moment is the thing that you should be focusing on and yes, have eyes for the future. But people that stare in the past or stare at the future ultimately will get lost in the present. And that is where the most important events will occur. Now, you can't go forward and not have a game plan to reach your potential if you want to be successful. But a lot of people don't necessarily care about being successful. A lot of people are happy to sit in mediocrity and that is fine. Again, a bird in the hand. It's absolutely wonderful to have, and especially if you can make the most of that bird in the hand, maybe it is better than chasing those two in the bush. Who knows?